Today I'm doing a top five for RPGs that nobody has really actually played, or not to say nobody's played, but the majority of people skipped it, didn't really think about it, kind of flew over a lot of people's heads, and I'm trying to take a couple of games from each kind of generation because if I pick just one generation, it's kind of easy to center on PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, Xbox, Xbox 360 generation. So let's uh, take a few from each generation. And uh, to qualify for this, it basically is a game that didn't really seem to capture much uh, attention towards the majority of gamers. And on top of that, didn't sell well. So that excludes games like Final Fantasy, but also isn't really talked about behind the scenes games such as Grandia and Legend of Dragoon, where it might not be big to just general gamers, but is obviously big in the RPG community. So here we go, we're going to talk about five games, in my personal opinion, that were actually pretty good, but really never, ever, ever talked about. Number five, Jade Cocoon. Remember in 1999 when the craze was capture a monster, train it, and be basically the best you can be. Pokemon, Digimon, and uh, you know a bunch of other spin-offs. Jay Cocoon was kind of like that first 3D idea. You would go into the world and collect these bugs and they would evolve. And not just bugs, but you could uh, capture these monsters. They would evolve and become your team on the battlefield. And it was a turn-based RPG. It wasn't amazing, but it was a really cool idea. And it was one of the first 3D, fully 3D games to kind of give you that option of what Pokemon and Digimon were giving you, but on the PlayStation 1. So it definitely holds this kind of special place in my heart. And I always hope for another one. And uh, I've heard rumors that there is a Jade Cocoon 2 coming out, or there was, or there is, I don't know. But either way, Jade Cocoon, the first one, was definitely an interesting concept, and it looked pretty damn cool. Number 4, Legend of Lagaya or Lagia, whatever, 2. The first one in this series actually generated a pretty positive reception from most people on the PlayStation 1. Uh, it was an RPG that kind of let you make your own combos. You know, press X, square, triangle, uh, circle to create all different types of combos. And number two carried that over, except that you can um, actually master combos to the point where you wouldn't have to memorize them or click them. You just click this simple command and they do it for you. Uh, this game wasn't phenomenal in the story department. Actually, it was pretty bad in the story department, despite having a kind of cool twist that the end or midway point but it was the combat system that made it really fun trying out new combos and stuff was really cool in my opinion and mix matching it is always a cool option because a lot of rpgs on the early ps2 days or ps1 days were basically click attack and then pick an attack so it was different and uh, some unique for you know it was one of my first ps2 rpgs so it was unique for its time and i definitely would have recommended it back then and i still enjoy it for you know what it did today Number 3, Ark the Lod, Twilight of the Spirits. So here's another PS2 RPG that seemed to either just be ignored because people hated it or just nobody paid attention. But this is kind of interesting to me because I actually like this one a lot. Uh, the story was about two brothers, so you play two different sides of the story. And they interact and you switch party members every once in a while. And it's really cool to see two very different sides of the story all interact. Uh, inter intertwined into one major plot point um i really enjoyed the story of this uh the gameplay was kind of like the strategic uh, move it around the field uh, think of it kind of like a strategy game I guess you can say kind of like a Final Fantasy tactics but what was really cool was just uh, getting to know your party members and each one had this different unique personality and uh, I really enjoyed the art design and just it was like one of these games that no one seemed to really care about and I played the old Ark Lads and I personally like this one the most of them all so I was really surprised no one actually mentions this one
Number two, Magna Carta two. Now, I'll be honest, I never played the first one. It looked kind of like this epic uh, RPG mid-fantasy stuff. So, Magna Carta 2 comes out for the Xbox 360. I'm like, oh, this looks interesting. Gameplay is very similar to Final Fantasy 12. I know a lot of people don't like that one. However, it is my favorite Final Fantasy. So, I was like, why not? Let's give it a shot, right? And uh, I really, really enjoyed this one. The story was a bit cliche at times, but I thought it was really cool because the characters did things that you wouldn't expect. Not to mention, uh, he was just a badass Super Saiyan. He would go Super Saiyan at points, not knowing what he was doing, and just slice and dice. I mean, it, it was the amnesia story where he forgets who he is and blah, blah, blah. But as you learn, it's a pretty cool twist, I thought. Uh, and the gameplay, like I said, was a really major feature of why I loved it. I love uh, turn-based, but I also love the fact that you can move around the field and stuff like Final Fantasy XII. Uh, it gave you some pretty cool uh, party members, a lot of extra optional stuff. It was a pretty lengthy adventure. It looked really nice. So overall, I thought Magna Carta 2 was a really solid... RPG that everybody seemed to just ignore even though I even gave it a high rating and said how much I did enjoy it And also it was a Korean RPG and you don't really see that too much Number one infinite undiscovery Now, I know this game gets a lot of flag, and I really don't know why. I guess because IGN just said it wasn't as good as other RPG, or GameSpot said blah, blah, blah. I don't really understand why. I guess the voice acting was definitely a lot to be desired, but the story itself was hardly bad. I actually really dug it, and I really enjoyed the fact that it didn't hold back things that, like, in, in an RPG, you expect him to fall in love with someone, but of course, if the woman's in danger, he's going to save her. And spoilers, because nobody's actually going to go back and play a 2006 game the woman that he falls in love with dies i'm like what the fuck he cannot even get uh in time to save her and it's pretty cool that it takes chances on top of that towns just get demolished and you don't really see that in rpgs and a couple of you do but not in the majority and i thought it was just really cool because it had this really dark tone even though the main character was like a little uh, kind of like a wussy character he became a, a, a man at the end probably because he got laid at the end but became a man at the end and it was really cool and the fighting system was what you expect from Tri-Ace, quick, fun, and exciting. I personally really dug the game. It was a little bit on the short side, but it definitely qualified, in my opinion, for an RPG that every RPG fan should at least try and see if they enjoy. It's like one of my number one underrated RPGs out there, uh, just for the story, art design, and gameplay alone. So that is my top five RPGs that nobody has played or heard of, and uh, I would love to hear your top five or top ten RPGs. It could be from PC, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, Xbox, Xbox 360, whatever system. Um, and these are my top five. And uh, yeah, leave a comment if you have some RPGs on the PS3 that, that you thought were pretty good but no one played. List them below because I would be interested in trying them out. And uh, everybody have a wonderful day.